don't know those costs. How can we make a decision whether we should outsource it or do it in-house or whether we should buy capital equipment to support that or whether we should retire this range of products and replace it with this range? What's the profitability of these customers? How do we do that if we don't know the product cost? Well, the answer to the question of how do we do it is we do it properly. <laughs> uh, you know, those, as I talked about before, those product and service costs are just plain wrong. And so if you're going to say, well, how do we price the product? Well, we'll add up the cost, material cost, labor cost, overhead, and then add in a, you know, a margin to give us a price. That's going to be seriously misleading. And yet I know it's widespread. In, uh, in, in many companies, many industries across the board. The actual calculation of the cost is not correct. And then we apply overhead based on some kind of labor hours or machine hours or, or some, something of that nature, and that just amplifies the errors. Let me give you a simple example. Suppose you've got a factory that has um, four product lines. And then uh, you're working away, doing good, and then uh, someone from corporate comes along and they do some profitability analysis and they say, product line D is uh, not profitable. Not profitable enough. We're going to outsource that uh, to some Far East low-cost country. So they dismantle it and send it off. Now, which costs go away? Well, material cost goes away because you don't buy the material. Maybe you fire a couple of people, so some of your labor costs will go away. But a big chunk of your cost is going to stay, isn't it? Now, where is the cost that stays? Where's that going to go now? Well, of course, now that's going to be uh, lumped into overhead, and that'll then be applied to the other three products. Now, what's going to happen then to the profitability of those three products? So um, I would say over the last sort of 10 years or so, uh, we work with many, many companies, hundreds of companies, and I would say that um, almost all of them are taking orders they should uh, turn down, turning down orders they should take, outsourcing things that they should make themselves, or vice versa, um, have, a, have made mistakes in terms of uh, withdrawing products from the market, which, uh, which really then undermines their profitability, and, and all of those decisions are uh, just made badly because of this uh, idea of using a product cost. Now, I know many of you uh, listening to this uh, presentation, you know, you work for sophisticated companies and you yourself have got clear understanding of, of financial analysis and so on. You don't just blindly follow a, a standard cost or a process cost or a service cost. You, you have a better understanding than that. But I have to tell you, my experience has been over the last uh, 10 or 15 years working on this stuff that really most companies make bad decisions when it comes to this. Design of the product is equally bad too. When uh, product people, they design the product for the cost of manufacture. And what that means is they design the product for a small amount of labor hours. But when the cost is not driven by the number of labor hours, that means that they're designing products that are really not the cost that they think they are. And this is very harmful. So what are we going to do about this? Well, we're going to uh, look at different ways to make these kinds of decisions. So let's take a look at this. None of this is very new. You know, most of these uh, methods have been around for a long time, but one of the things that we do, and this is the key really to decision making, is that our decisions are made um, using the impact of that decision on the value stream as a whole. So we don't look at the individual product. We say, if we take this order, how will that impact the value stream as a whole? If we make this rather than buy it, what will be the overall impact on our revenue, on our costs, on our, on our profitability? We also look, though, at um, how does that impact the capacity within the value stream and the operational performance measurements. Why do we do this? Well, one is because it gives us real numbers. The, the information that comes out when we do this kind of analysis is really true. This is what will happen to our revenue. This is what will happen to our costs. And this is what the true profitability will be. This is how much more cash will be in our pockets. So this leads to better decisions. It's, it's also, though, better understood. 
See, most people can understand this. You say, here's what's happening now, here's what's going to change if we introduce this new product, and here's what's going to happen to our profitability, our cash, our inventory, our performance measurements, our on-time delivery, the capacity usage within the, within the organization. And we have up-to-date information. You see, we're reporting this typically weekly for the value stream. Now, different decisions need different time frames, but we've got up-to-date valid information that, in fact, is being used week by week to manage and control the business. And we don't just look at the financial information either. We use what we call a box score. I've got a, I have a diagram of this. And the box score is made up of three different pieces of information. At the top of the box score, we have the operational performance measurements. So these are the measurements we talked about earlier for the value stream. What is the performance of the value stream? At the bottom, we have the, a summary of the financial information, and that's what comes from the financial, uh, sorry, the value stream accounting uh, each week. So this would be an income statement or a cost statement that applies to the value stream. And then the section in the middle is dealing with capacity. How much of our capacity is being used productively? How much non-productively? And, uh, and what's our available capacity? So if we're making a decision on, let's say, a make-buy, then we would say, well, what does the value stream look like currently from the, an operational point of view, a financial point of view, and the use of our capacity? And then we would say, if we make this ourselves, how will that impact our measurements? How would it impact us financially? And, and how will that um, affect the capacity within the, within the operation? What if we make it um, with a local company? What if we make it in a low-cost country? What if we make part of it, and what if we make part of it, and we uh, outsource another part of it, and then bring it together at another point? There might be five or six different scenarios that we want to, uh, to look at, and we look at them on this box score, this three-dimensional view of the value stream, looking at the operational performance, the financial performance, and the capacity issues of the value stream. So that's, in a nutshell, how we deal with all of these decisions, pretty much. Now, quoting on pricing, of course, um, that's a different issue because pricing is not related to cost. So many companies do cost and plus. Now, I know if you're in the defense industry, sometimes that's valid, but uh, the price of a product is determined by the value that that product gives to your customer. And that's why we need to be uh, very uh, aware of what it is that creates value. In fact, that's the first principle of Lean, isn't it? We focus on customer value. The second principle is dealing with value stream, uh, working by value streams. And uh, so that comes together uh, when it comes to pricing. Other make-buy decisions, understanding the financial impact of Lean. You know, we got the current value stream map, our future value stream map, maybe that's a year from now. Well, we would do a box score to show what is the impact of all of the changes we plan to make over the next 12 months on our, um, on our value stream. What's going to happen to us operationally? What's going to happen from a capacity point of view? And what's the financial impact of that? This is very important. Many companies go into lean and they say, you know, what's our savings? And then people work out some, I saved this amount of money. Usually though, the controller or the CFO is going to say, well, where is it? Where is all this saving? So much of it doesn't hit the bottom line. Um, we'd be doing this for capital purchases. We'd have uh, typically maybe a 3P event with six or seven different alternative approaches to solving that problem. All of these issues are, are dealt with not by saying what's the cost of the product and how does it change, but by saying what's the impact on the value stream as a whole. We're going to take a break now and uh, we'll come back and look at transaction elimination and target costing. Mm -hmm.